106, welcome to the stream. Ah, no, no, I was first. I was first. I have screenshot. Screenshot proof. I ascend on anus. I guess. Welcome to the stream. Open Twitch app. Ah, hi Julian, welcome to the street. Oh. I actually planned on having no stream tonight because I have. Uh, Literally a herd of Europasaurus waiting to be painted. 21 specimens. Um, but then I heard that somebody's actually waiting for the stream tonight. So let's do a, a short one. Maybe maybe two hours. I, I should say. Uh, okay. And apparently uh, there was a wish, a request for an Anzu. Um, and funny enough, we haven't done yet an uh, Anzu on the Paleo stream. A large Oviraptorosaur from uh, Hell Creek, which is, I think by now, pretty well known. Although not all material is published yet. The hell chicken, yes. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Uh, I, I still have lots of pictures on my phone opened right now with intestines of a lot of animals. Uh, and the D Long, welcome to the stream. Let's see if I can find a good reference. That should be no problem, considering that there are a lot of different mounts and models by now. Very nice models of the skull, for example, in very different perspectives, which is very handy. Okay, guys, um, what could Anzu do? What could it make? Okay. Uh, tablet react. Thank you. Oh, and apparently Tristan will will join as well later on. We will see if this will 
if you will join before I end the stream again. <laughs> uh, making a nest. Uh, Crynoid Niggerraft is is a fantastic idea for for a second sketch. Uh, let's keep that in mind. Yes, Julian, sure. Cuckoo Anzu chick being fed by. Um, I had a little discussion with um, Andrea Kau on Twitter on the matter of nest parasitism in dinosaurs, in non-avian dinosaurs. And apparently it's rather unlikely because this kind of nest parasitism, uh, which is typical for the cuckoo, has to be, uh, has to do with, with highly altricial species. So with extensive parental care within the nest. Um, it is therefore rather unlikely for animals like uh, troodontids, oviraptorosaurs, etc. Now, uh, D-Long, we, we start with Anzi. <laughs> Bitten by Pictinodon. Hmm. <laughs> I think nest building is so far the most interesting idea. Let's try that. Eh. Tablet, please react. Ah, no. Group of Anzu investigating a wild. Oh! Oh, uh, 106. That's actually a fantastic idea. I have a picture in mind that would fit perfectly. Let me Google some wildfire, uh, some wild fire in Australia. Although wildfire is maybe more bushfire. I know there are some birds who tend to patrol the fire front. Ah, that's a good, good reference. Great. Ah, oh, sorry for that, D-Long. <laughs> Dan, killing killing people is no solution. I hope you guys can hear me at least. <laughs> oh, wait. Let's start. Oh. Here will be. <coughs> Anzu eating a crispy fried Hell Creek pteranodontid. <laughs> <Tyranodontid. laughs> that sounds like sassy. 
I'm a Dino Dan. Ah, or Dan, yeah, that <laughs> that fits as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hi, Julian. Welcome to the stream. Hi, Yashua. Uh, welcome to your very own stream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so unusual to see you here. Are you normally on this? Yeah, I, I, it, it feels very, very unusual. I know. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's kind of special. Mm hmm. And please, tablet, keep, keep working. Thank you. Keep it together. Keep it together. Keep it together. Damn it. <laughs> So, what have you been doing today? Anything interesting? Um, painting a small panel for the graphic novel, um, working, Ooh. starting with another one, and also working on a larger double page, and feeding the cats. Aww. Yes. Uh, something else? I don't think so. Hmm. Compared to other people's life, mine is probably mostly boring. <laughs> you get to spend all day doing art of dinosaurs. I wouldn't say that was... <laughs> yes, but it wouldn't be interesting, for example, to, to uh, make a film of. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. Only if you would uh, hmm. use a lot of CGI for the stuff that's going on in my head. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically, it, it's this movie of this paleo artist, and the camera and my angle dreams, goes over yeah. his shoulder <laughs> and zooms into the picture, and then the story unfolds. It shivers. Nah, more like stuff uh, sitting on the <laughs> toilet and imagine suddenly huge uh, fleets of Star Destroyers uh, flying through the room or stuff like that. <laughs> Oh, that would yes, be funny. that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Normally, I think about people being chased by dragons. Also good. Mm. In my case is more like riding the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my dragons aren't large enough to carry people because ah. my dragons are realistic. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm saying that to the probably the one person in the world who's actually create quite believable realistic dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I I don't know all projects out there involving realistic mm -hmm. dragons. Let's see. Uh, apparently Tristan wanted to join too. Mm. In, in a while. You probably heard there was a Hell Creek dinosaur coming on. <laughs> hmm. Maybe. Uh, have you seen the um the paper that where where I attacked you beneath with a um with Oh the colour. Yes. I, I only hmm. read part I've of the abstract, it. but it, it uh, sounds very interesting. Yes, I was when I noticed it, I was in the middle of um, doing some revision, so I haven't had a proper look at it yet. But yeah, the title looks like it could be very interesting. Yeah. It's, it's about um, correlation between coloration and climate and mm -hmm. um, latitude, stuff like that. Very cool. Oh, it's a new paper. It's Wait, new. Is it a new paper? Is it... I I think yeah. it's already a little bit older. Mhm. Mm it's uh, apparently by reviews two thousand and nineteen. This paper, but um, if it's a review, the actual rule is probably an older rule. 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 Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. So. 
I hope you you slept well after leaving yesterday. Hmm. I did actually, and I did actually manage to get to sleep instead of staying up for two hours and then I, uh, I noticed back into the comments. <laughs> I, I I was waiting for the comments and they weren't coming and. Uh... I tricked you all this time. Whenever I've hopped back in two hours later, it has been a plot to confuse you, confound you. When in actuality, I always get to bed on time. <laughs> sometimes no, you no, use your really. second just... account. Sometimes you just use bots. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but which is my second account? Mm -hmm. That's that's still undecided. Yeah. I have a. I have actually considered doing that on some social media platforms and um, creating a second account where I I pose as just a complete pelly botany nerd who doesn't care anything at all about <laughs> dinosaurs, so then I can just have conversations with myself. <laughs> but I thought, mm, no, I'm not going to do that. That would probably get a bit too much. <laughs> just jumping into into some random conversations. <laughs> oh, but have you heard about Equisitum? <laughs> yeah. But what about the ginkgos? What about the ginkgos? <laughs> ah, that'd be quite. It would be quite funny though. <laughs> Although, apart from now that I've told everyone who's watching a stream that it might do it, so they'll all realise when it happens. But um, apart from that, I wonder how long it would take people to realise it was actually just the same person. <laughs> ah. Well, I think on on Twitter it would be relatively easy to mm -hmm. disguise yourself in such a way. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Peliobot nerd four two three. Shush! Don't no, don't do. tell them. Okay. It's actually going to be four two five. No, I'm. I probably won't. Kentucky Fried Ass. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really nice. Kentucky Fried Enzo. Also good. Mm. Burning Enzo. No, it's just standing in front of of the fire front here. Uh, mm. And yes, do long um, after this, we probably do a. Um. A crinoid mega raft because they are awesome. That actually reminds me, I've still got a um, piece of paleo art I started of an ichthyosaur swimming underneath a raft that was going to have crinoids on. I still need to finish that. Yeah, I, d I think it was, I, it was, oh crikey, it was about a year ago. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started it during one of the paleo streams and then left. Where are you? It was left to die. Hmm. Nope, not that one. Is it here? Yes. Um. <clears throat> I've just put it in voice of the chat, so it's not finished yet, but I sort of left it because I accidentally did the ichthyosaur on one layer, so I can't, I, uh, I was a bit worried because I need to move on the fins forward quite, so I left it for, until I, oh, yeah, I remember got a new program. Yeah. Hmm. I'd still really like to finish it because I'm pleased with the composition and the lighting. Yeah, that would be nice. I think I would make the, the lock um, more rough. It looks very, mm -hmm. very straight right now. Oh yeah, it was. It's that's basically just the base layer. I haven't ah, done anything okay. to it. Anzu stuff, Anzu stuff, lots of Anzu stuff. Hmm. Exit. 
Exactly. Yeah. I'm just trying to download a um I'm just trying to find something on the um application finder and I can't re I remember what it's called but I also remember you need to type in something different to find the name because the search thing is weird. Yep. It doesn't no long. Hmm. <laughs> the Kata Raptor, welcome to the stream. Uh, how about an illustration of a sauropod trackway in Oxfordshire, England, England, with a number of different sauropod species traveling together? Sounds interesting, uh, but maybe on another stream. This will be a very short one. Where are you? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, yesterday when, when I did that um, Sandofnia, the turtle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had Twitter and Facebook this morning. I was greeted by that thing grinning at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. You know when, I when, when I started uh, painting in the eyes, <laughs> I think for a solid minute I, I, I couldn't continue because I was laughing at myself. <laughs> Okay, I need to check that out. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, it, it just looked like a do uh, a dobby in a tortoise shell. Yes. <laughs> Although a not very cute dobby. It must. It, it must. Some mm. people would say dobby itself isn't that cute, but. Hmm. I don't, Dobby has a nice squeaky voice that makes up for the fact that he's a bit creepy looking. Very creepy indeed. Actually, he's probably creepy looking because of Uncanny Valley. That the because of course he is. Uh, I don't know. He has a lot of human-like features, and because it's rendered in a CGI, it's reasonably yeah. realistic in in actual settings. So it's probably just gives people an uncanny valley effect yeah in a way definitely hmm. Hmm. actually I think the worst thing for me with the uncanny valley effect is doll you know those creepy porcelain dolls that are just sitting there <laughs> yes. blank with their dead glazed eyes staring for and then you remember they're made for children and you worry for children's sanity <laughs> hmm. it might uh, explain some behaviors of previous generations <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. it wasn't me it was the doll's fault Okay, there was a, there was actually a um uh, an instance of that, but uh yeah, that's it's a bit creepy. I can never remember. What's he called? Robert. It's a Robert the doll. Uh. And. Okay, yeah, it's this sort of story of it is really creepy, and the doll itself is even creepy. Ugh. So, but anyway, it was it was this uh uh. Basically, I can't remember when it was, um, m mid, I think it might have been in the 50s, or, um, in, in America, there was this boy, and he, um, part of this, um, upper 
class family, but he was very lonely. He didn't really have any friends. He didn't really talk to anyone. And his aunt, was it, sent him this doll to be his friend. It was a sort of small child-sized doll that she'd seen in a windowsill wearing a little sailor's outfit. I think it was sort of a mannequin. So it was sent to. She sent it to her nephew, um, so that he, uh, so that he could have a friend to talk to and play. With. And basically, this boy became incredibly attached to it. And I don't know how true all the stories are, but it's instances of things like, uh, oh, was it his grandma or one of his family members tried to take the doll away from him? took the doll away and locked it up somewhere and the next day they found her dead with the doll in the playroom <laughs> uh -huh. and yeah just lots of other stories like that the wife um, uh, sort of was the um, father died and the wife um, was eventually driven mad uh, her son had been sent away to um, college and um, met a girl and got married they came back to the house, and he eventually, uh, he uh, he instantly sort of went back to his old ways of treating the doll as an actual person. And Yara, it, it sort of drove the, it had driven the mother mad, uh, being in the house with this doll for so many years, even though it was in the office locked up in a box that was nailed shut. But, oh, it, it's all a bit creepy. <laughs> And it's now the doll is. I think she even was it the mother or the wife. I think it was the uh, his the the boy's wife um, tried setting it on fire, but it and she thought she succeeded. She took it out one night, uh, poured petrol over it, set it on fire, and went into the breakfast room the next day. And the doll was actually. Oh my goodness me, uh, Jaden! Don't post things like that after. And while I'm telling a creepy story. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Oh, that sent shivers down my spine. But um yeah. She walked into the breakfast room the next morning and the doll was sitting there and the uh husband and the boy, the husband, um was sort of saying, um, Robert told me what you did to him last night. You shouldn't do that. That wasn't very nice. I've convinced him not to kill you. <laughs> So how charming! Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much of it is exaggerated. Probably quite a bit of it, but yeah, it's a bit. It's rather creepy. Yep. Mm. Sorry, Sass. See, I'm not very good at telling stories. <laughs> uh. But yeah, now. Oh, it's now it's in a museum and it sort of um sort of um there's the superstition before you take a photograph of Robert or film him at all you actually have to ask his permission because otherwise bad luck will before you <laughs> and uh, surrounding exhibition pinned to all the walls are basically letters from people saying that I'm sorry I took a photograph of you without asking you your permission, I've had so much bad luck and I was involved in a car crash, my dog died, lots of things like that. <laughs> I was ready for it at that time, I'm Jaden. You didn't quite get me then. Ah, well, the, the worst was already. <laughs> Although the worst. Nah, nah, that's not the worst actually. Yeah. There's one that's worse. But we don't speak about it. <laughs> this is a safe place. Yes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I presume that's the one you're referring to. Hmm. Hmm. 
I went into this picture a little bit unorganized, as I now realize. I wonder mm -hmm. how it will work when I add the flames. Feed the flame. The eternal flames! I agree with them um, uh, that De Long. Um, yeah, when I first saw the pictures of Dobby when I was younger, I thought he looked really creepy. But as soon as I watched the movie, he was just really nice, so that it didn't bother me at all after that. Hmm. To me, it looks creepy up to this day. <laughs> <laughs> he still sort of looks creepy, but um, I think the first time I saw him, it gave when I was very young it gave me night um, <laughs> but um, as soon as I watched the movie um, quite a few years later it's like oh he's really sweet he's really nice mm. although I feel cheated that in the films he only appears in the first in the second and the um, second last one um, whereas in the books, he's in basically every single book. So I feel yeah. cheated. I think the only book he doesn't, he's not really in that much, is the third and the first, of course, because he hasn't been introduced at that point. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it's things like, oh no, that would be spoilers, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Okay, now let's add some flames! Hmm. Dark. Hmm. Oh, something, uh interesting happened today so uh, well of course you know about the um paleobotany book that i keep on going on about yes um found out something today which might make it um more likely to happen although i'm probably not although i won't say exactly what it is because i probably shouldn't or can't so why but... do you tell me anyway <laughs> <laughs> well, you do it. You say, oh, there was this really interesting sauropod at EAVP last year. Oh, but, but I can't say anything about it. I'm sorry, but that's me. <laughs> oh, oh, time to get a taste of your own medicine. It's <laughs> not fair. And I apologize to everyone else as well. <laughs> so, but there is something that makes the possibility of publishing that book more likely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Very good. Yep. Now, uh, now all, all I need to do is actually get on and start <laughs> and doing writing more it. with it. <laughs> and yep. illustrating it and... Oh stuff. dear. But the, the, main the main problem is it, I don't want it to take... I mean, I think it's probably going to take about four years from now to do it the least. But I don't want it to take that long, so I'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, that's why I don't think about book projects and just do them. Uh, yeah, everyone take notes. That's why Joshua doesn't think about book projects, despite the fact that he's doing a book for himself and is also completely illustrating another. No, Joshua never thinks about book projects. <laughs> Not actively. <laughs> Uh, they just sort of happen. It happens, exactly. Mm. Oh yeah, so when when is uh, Dragons of the World being published? Uh, that could take another ten years. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Potentially. I mean, I I haven't worked on it for for quite a while. 
which is mm. also it has a little bit to do with that I'm very busy with other stuff mm -hmm. and also mm. that I'm a little bit overwhelmed by what has to be covered and in in part mm. because all the stuff I have already needs an update <laughs> <laughs> yeah I I have that problem as well for um Ingo year seven form I did an arts award which is sort of a big art project for for an ex uh, for a certificate that goes towards GCSEs if you wanted but um uh yeah um I did that and I created a book actually it was when I found out about yours because I called it uh, Dragons of the World. Oh, well, it's in so, it's um, in a long-standing tradition to to call the, such books blah 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 of the world. Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I did that, and since then I've had the idea that I really want to do an actual proper book on dragon. But um, all basically all the dragons in that book were more uh, how to train your dragon style, very imp probable wouldn't really work or anything so, um i apart from maybe one or two of those dragons i can't really use any of them in the sort of a when i started doing it more seriously i came up with so many dragon designs and i think one year i produced about 50 different 50 or more different dragons and i wow. knew all their biology their natural history and everything about them but uh i never got down and actually started doing the book and now for the last couple of years i haven't really done that many dragons but i'm i know that basically all the dragons that i have already done either i can't use or i need to do again or um <laughs> i need to think more about because yeah there are some things i wanted to include in the book that now i know more about biology are so improbable that it would just be a bit silly to include them. Yeah, yeah, the although it's real. it's not it's not it's not really too silly. It's probably less silly than dragonology in the fact that I don't include magic at all, and I talk about them more as real animals as opposed to. Um, yeah. So I'd say it's less. It's the sort of ideas I had were more probable. A, a lot more probable than the Dragonology books, but still, then it's not really to a standard that I'd be happy with anymore. Hmm. So, yeah, and so, I, yeah. I, I need to start um, writing down um, ideas again. A, a huge problem is also that everything I've wrote so far is in German, but I realized recently that. Um, you know, I, I should go back and do everything in English um, because it's much more likely to get, I think, an English publisher on this mm -hmm. than in German, where the, the market is smaller. And uh, yeah, it's more likely in that case that, that somebody, uh, if it is successful in, in English, that somebody picks it up and translate it into German. Mm -hmm. I think there is so far there I have never heard of a German publisher going into that direction. Mm -hmm. It's it's so I, niche was... that it only works on the international market. There was the um, uh, Archaeopteryx by Peter Wernhofer or Wernhofer um, um, his book this book was originally published in German and then translated into English. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, um, but it, that's, it's, that's it's more of a te technical. It's more of a technical. Um, yeah. it's more of a textbook as opposed to a popular book. Yeah, and it's not about uh, speculative evolution or. Yeah. Hmm. Of course, I actually just yesterday oh, I yeah, I. There was... I looked on Amazon uh, for Wellenhofer's um, uh, illustrated encyclopedia of pterosaurs. What? Yes. I need to see that. Um, hmm. 
because there are some very nice pictures in there. Of course, it's totally outdated by now. Uh, but I only have Wellenhofer's small book about pterosaurs so far. And damn it, um, stop oh. screwing up. It's illustrated by, by Sibic. Oh, this book. Yeah, yes. completely Sibicized. Yeah. Yes, I'm not sure whether I've I've seen I've seen the cover of this book, um, but I'm not sure whether I've actually ever seen uh, an actual copy of it. Hmm. Yeah, it's mm. it's not that common. I think. I mean, it's potato sauce, no? So. Um, mm hmm. And they weren't that popular back in the day when Wellenhofer published this. Mm hmm. Uh, so also a lot of libraries will probably not have it, even if they have a dinosaur shelf. Yeah, but there are there are some very nice illustration in there as well. Mm -hmm. For example, yeah. Uh, yeah. at the very last few pages, there is a archaeo uh, and no, not an archaeopteryx in um, uh, Ramphorhynchus, mm -hmm. which is extremely modern looking. What was that you cut out for a moment? It's uh, it's a Ramphorhynchus, and it's uh, extremely modern looking. And I think it's a illustration by. Uh, okay. Ah, oh God, what's, what was his fa first name again? Uh, the German illustrator, and he made, I think back in the 60s, um, illustrations of Archaeopteryx, and they could be still used today. Oh. So modern. Oh, his last name is Reichel. Mm hmm. Sassy probably knows his name. Uh... <laughs> what is with with all the people posting creepy pictures today on Discord? How dare you? <laughs> okay, Sassy don't it's the know. Turtle. The turtle. It was a turtle. Oh, that's creepy. The Pokosaurus, mm. welcome to the stream. Actually, yeah, have we ever... At some point, we need to do an, uh, an actual spooky stream, so or creepy, even. A creepy stream. Yeah, next, uh, next we, Halloween. We've done the... Mm -hmm. I think we actually yeah. did a creepy... Or did we? I think we, we made... Did we a, did the... Um... Um... We did mythical creatures and folklore creatures, was it? Yes. There was that stream last Halloween, but um, I was thinking about doing so a creepy stream. It would be more so doing paleontological, so prehistoric animals, um, or plants. Hint, hint. Um, <laughs> in either creepy lighting creepy. or in in positions where they actually look really creepy, and then you, you realise that ooh and. Oh, it's just that. <laughs> yeah, something like that could be interesting. Just make everything creepy, even if it isn't. Mm -hmm. Creepy Ankyornis is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, it goes. Computer not work. It goes into the direction I want it to be now. Hmm. Mm. I think I will need Actually, to yeah. work here with some other tools. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thinking about um, books, that I still need to um, get a copy of um, uh, Stembirds of the of Sonhofen. I 
I still need to get that. Oh, book. oh, Matthew Martinix. Yes. Yeah, that's very nice. I mean, I've wanted it for a couple of years, but I've never actually got it. I don't know how how much it costs nowadays. Maybe I'm you just can get it. Down, yep, it's only sixteen pound. Yeah. It, it's not that mu it's not that much at all. Ah, okay. Although maybe you can get it even cheaper in a, a second-hand version. Hmm. Actually, yeah, I'm I'm really pleased that um. What? Oh, b -b 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 the hardback is that much? Oh, that's such a good price. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I've been wanting a cop uh a copy of Carnivorous Plants: uh, Physiology, Ecology, and Evolution. It's a big textbook on kind of. It's basically Ooh. the current the most up-to-date review of carnivorous plant. It's a carnivorous um, plant bible. It's sort of, yeah. But, um, uh, more like the New Testament of the Bible, because it's the new version. <laughs> and it's, as, as opposed to covering most other big reviews of carnivorous plants have covered sort of, okay, this is the diversity of carnivorous plants. This is, we did these tests to show that they catch food like this, and this is how That's they digest. <laughs> and it was sort of looking at it from that perspective. Whereas this new book is looking, well, yeah, looking at their physiology, ecology, and evolution. So, nice. Um, there are sections in it about their conservation, about um the theory behind uh the carnivorous syndrome, and how they evolve, which is what I'm quite interested in. There's quite a good. There are quite a few good sections on that. But That's nice. yeah. The hardback came out last, and um, it was about it was for a long time about a hundred to uh, ninety five to a hundred pounds, and then a couple of weeks ago the paperback came out, which was only about forty five pounds. I've gone back onto um, Amazon now, and the hardback has gone down to sixty five pounds, which is which is very good. So I'm now I'm now I can. Now now actually consider getting the hardback <laughs> or the paperback. Hmm. How tempting. <laughs> I know. And, oh. I have to. I've been. I've been meaning to get it the last couple of days because I don't currently have it out from the library because the library wanted it back. <laughs> ah, damn it, library. Well, it was actually an interlibrary loan, so um, it was on loan from ah, okay. the University of Reading. And uh, I think well, when I took it out, it had just been returned by one of the um, professors there. So um, <laughs> they probably want it back since I've had it for three. <laughs> but yeah, I'll have to have a look into that. Hmm. Yes, definitely. Good. Hmm. Okay, now it's getting. Oh, I did. Somewhere. I found uh, another couple of. Uh, I think it's there are two different volumes of this book, which I um found a couple of uh, probably about a month ago. Um, uh, bird coloration. So they released two large volumes just on bird coloration. Oh. So, um, the first is about uh mechanisms and measurements. So uh, how the pigments form, how they're sequestered into the feathers and. Uh, may, I think it's also their distributions among oh, birds. Just, things like just that. on that, wow! And then the second one is the fun is bird coloration function and evolution. So how the color relates to the bird's behavior. Uh, and, that's more interesting uh, for me. Yes. Yes. Nice. But um, so yeah, uh, that's also the cheaper of the two. Okay, mm -hmm. and there's only one left in stock, and it's at a very <sighs> good price. And I should never, I should never look at Amazon Prime at this late at night. <laughs> yeah, I I know the trouble is real. Yeah, but yeah, those are two books that I've got on a waiting list to get when I have enough money for them. Yeah, you know, or, I I or still money want to, that to justify um, getting them. That book uh, of Charles R. Knight and his paleo art. So it's this big. Book. I think it's what what was it called? Uh, the artist who looked through time. Um, and it's no longer uh, available apparently. I 
Yeah, I, I looked on Amazon and um, <clears throat> I want to pay money the for it. The artist to saw through time. Ah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that looks nice. And they said not available. Mm -hmm. When was Charles R. Uh, Charles R. Knight born? Early twenty seventh century, maybe late eighteen seventy four. Ah, eighteen seventy four to nineteen fifty three. Ah, quick. Let's see, even mm. earlier. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I really like his illustrations. Cause they are. Pre he does present them more like animals as opposed to being monsters. Yeah, most of the time it's. Mhm. Mm so that's what I quite like. Especially the mammals. Mhm. Mm yes. Well, his mammals actually look like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, after all, he was. At the end of the day, he's mostly known for his dinosaurs, but he was a mammal expert. Mm. Definitely. When you when you look at his work, it's and compare mammals mm -hmm. to dinosaurs, there's uh, so much more care and detail that went into into his mammals. Mm -hmm. And actually, you could probably almost. I've sometimes found this, especially pieces like the uh, Leaping Laylaps. Yeah. Um, they do sort of have aspects of them which are quite mammal-like. Yeah, so although that's... Maybe, maybe not so much the Leaping Laylaps, but that one... Even that one, I don't know what it is. It's just something about the face which reminds me of a mammal. Of a... Yeah, this has but, probably yeah. to do with um, uh, Edward Drinker Cope. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when he was commissioned to produce large pictures for uh, the American Museum of Natural History, um, he uh, got in touch with Cope, um, mm -hmm. and basically uh, for for two weeks camped in his house. <laughs> so the story goes. And Cope told his, him all about his, his newest ideas and everything. And shortly after that, Cope oh. died. Um, oh. But through Knight's pictures, his, his ideas basically lived on. Hmm. Okay, a few... I spent way too long on this piece. <laughs> <laughs> and where's Tristan? Mm -hmm. Shall I put a message in voices of- Oh my goodness, who keeps posting creepy pictures? Die long, ah. stop, it. stop it! Stop it, I, I am of a nervous disposition. Oh yeah, the the picture you've just posted, it looks a bit odd because it looks almost like the metacarpals are detached, which is odd looking because of course that doesn't normally happen. Wait, somebody... And then I remember that how weird how weird bats are because of course bats their metacarpals aren't attached into a palm; they make up more like the individual digits, which is just weird. Bats are weird. Oh yeah. Hmm. Oh, just um, oh. two days ago, I saw a, uh, uh, um, a bat for the first time up close because oh. we, we found a dead one in our garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I made lots and lots of photos of it <laughs> and that identified sounds it. Sounds like me whenever. Yeah. Then I buried it behind the garden pond. Mm hmm. Because I don't have 
the tools to uh, properly <laughs> remove flesh or the mm, insect. Well, you helpers. can simmer it. You can simmer it in water, and if you add a bit of uh, biological uh, washing powder uh, uh, for a um, washing machine. Uh, that should get the flesh off quite nicely. Yeah, uh, I'm. Yeah. I I think I have no patience for that. <laughs> <laughs> or rather, my 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 oh. family has has no taste for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do believe that tastes a little odd. Hmm. Uh, I think I'm nearly finished. Just a few more details on the eh. And we'll hmm. Actually, yeah, I, I should probably post my skull collection. Because uh, it's starting to get a little large. Well, it's not really large, it's starting to become a bit more substantial than two or three skulls. But, but um, yeah, I'm not sure if uh, Specios. Uh, uh, can't speak. Specios is watching now, but thank you very much for the uh, Chinese water deer skull. Thank you very, very much. Chinese water deer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got pictures on my phone, so I can even send you a pic. Oh, nice. Mm. Oh, hi, Zomba. Welcome to the stream. Zomba is sneaking around. Peanut butter. Oh. I, see. I see peanut butter in, my in the chat. Has... Oh dear. Yeah, my sister has sent me lots of pictures of kittens. I think uh, peanut butter is is, is our code walk, uh, word, wasn't it? Wasn't it? It's there was peanut butter and sea anemone, and I can never remember yeah. which is which. I I think I just I, I can never remember which. Is... I unmuted uh, Zomba, but he unmuted. Uh, he muted himself again. I think that. I think it was see an enemy is that he wants to come on, but then I don't see the point of peanut butter. I can't remember. Zomba, send us a translation. He used peanut butter again, so... Exactly. Correct translation is. <laughs> Makes sense. Hello. Hello. Uh, hi. Why did you make me stream again, Yeshua? I warned you, that was supposed to be incentive for you to not do that. <laughs> so which is which? Because there's peanut butter and sea enemy. An enemy. No one knows. No one knows. No one is supposed to know. <laughs> Yeah, Zomba, mm. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, to my knowledge, it was you who said I, I will stream again. That wasn't me, that was the other guy. Ah. Well, we have to find out who is the other guy. Mm -hmm. Put all of the anemones in jars. And then just stood in my yard staring at, um, <laughs> uh, staring. I don't know what he was staring at. There was this weird red orb in the sky. It looked like a crab. Makes sense. I do make sense. Yes. Zomba is the most Always. sense making person on this planet. I manufacture it on a. Industrial scale. True. <laughs> what? What? What do you mean I sound like Van Diesel? <laughs> what? Who said that? <laughs> um, I assume it's Dino Dan, don't, except don't on Twitch he's the Dino Dan. He has a stutter. Yeah. Don't insult Zomba's native language. Wow. I mean, uh, Zombreeze is uh, Zombanese? Mm. 
Zombinese is a very complex language to No, it isn't. It's got two words. <laughs> I'm sure it has more than two words. It's got two words, that's it. It's just the way you pronounce them that changes their neat meaning. Uh, no, it doesn't change their meaning, but everyone pronounces them differently anyway. Oh. I was hoping to get into a nice, good, long com conversation in, um, Zombanese. Are you hoping to that I, this would actually lead somewhere? Yes, I was hoping that I could do silly noises without... <laughs> and with having people to respond to the silly noises. <laughs> Everyone will always... Well, you're gonna do them anyway. Uh... <laughs> Your Italian needs work. Zuritic Italiano. Oh God! <laughs> what was that? <laughs> That was German, but with Italian uh, accent. <laughs> with, with, a, <laughs> with some sort of vague attempt at an Italian accent. <laughs> I would go that far. I know uh, we we uh, mm. our, one of our cats uh, gets a medication. It's called Simintra. And uh, me and my smallest sister tend to pronounce it very Italian. Simintera! Simintera! Give it some Simintera! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I know. <sighs> okay, Anzu is done, and I think we well, now... Well, uh, the Dino Dan, um, what does the af what does Zulu taste like? I don't know. Which is obviously, it tastes like this, tastes the same as every other human on Earth. Mm. Oh, dust. No one tolerates anything, Sassy. In fact, you should never tolerate anything. In fact, what? what's happened? What? Where am I? Exactly. You're on planet Earth. It's about 43 light years from your home planet. <laughs> so, Sassy has got. This is the second Kirby meme that Sassy has. Oh dear. <laughs> Not Jaden, too. <laughs> I won't tolerate this. I don't know what what does Kirby actually do because it seems like he just inhales stuff and doesn't I mean, choke. I mean that's 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 pretty much it. Really? Okay. See, there's Dragon Thunders being the better man. <laughs> what do you mean the physical embodiment? A black hole is physics. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. I'm just wondering. I'm I'm trying to analyze that statement. Kirby is the physical embodiment of a black. Black holes are. Yeah, black holes are physical, but do they? Yeah, you could argue that they do have a body since they have a map. But because of the way that they warp time space around them to succeed. Such a Joshua, Julian's explaining the joke again. Make him stop. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but but jokes aren't funny unless you have to explain. <laughs> so you know, Julian Julian has a point. <laughs> I'm well, yeah, not that, that's the thing. Have, I mean, I'm black not. holes. <laughs> At, at the very centre, of course, they're a uh, singularity, and they warp time space around to such extremes that you can basically say that space time stops within a black hole. So, if space time stops within a black hole, do they have a body or not? 
but then I suppose part of the, what we actually refer to as the black hole um, extends further outwards than the singularity where space-time comes to an end. However, before we reach that, depending on your perspective, um, it's... Ben and Dan, how dare you assume I have never come into contact physically with a black hole? One, that's a private matter, and two, don't assume. Hmm. Yes, D-Long, we, we want to do a, a crinoid mega raft now. Can't we just have crinoids become the... Just like the... the... Dominant species on this planet? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, can't we just... Crinoids just be everything? Hmm. Everything is a crinoid now. That would be an interesting... That would be an interesting speculative evolution project. Uh, no, 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 no speculative evolution. Just all animals, but their heads no, are crying. No, 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 what I mean is, if you took a terraformed planet and introduced only... I know, Dan, that was very rude of, and maybe of you. A couple of other organisms to actually help sustain the ecosystem, what would happen? Uh, hmm. Dino Dan, the problem is... A dead mosasaur is not the right anchor point for crinoids. No. What crinoids are you using? Um, I'm using Middle Jurassic ones. Mm -hmm. I'm using the ones at Home Depot. Ah, also Ow. nice. No, um, mm. be because when when people actually would read the paper, at least the uh, conclusions, they would know that, um. Crinoid mega rafts were only a thing during, um, before the end of the the Middle Jurassic, because then the ocean conditions changed and um, worms and mm. clams evolved that could um, dig into wood and therefore make these mega rafts uh, sink much faster, so that no crinoids could um, settle on them. Interesting. Nemosaurus is so it is a unique. Unsettling. It is a unique um, environment mm. that only existed during mm. the Triassic up to the Middle Jurassic. Hmm. When did the um, crinoids, which had the um, floats attached to them, evolve, or did they extend past that boundary that you were just describing? Because of course they don't rely on the mm. wood to stay afloat. Ah, uh, not necessarily. I only read so far the conclusion and the abstract of the paper. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and apparently they are very um, very light built, these crinoids. <laughs> so they don't weigh what, them uh, the, the lockdown. What, uh, what was I going to say? What's this paper called? <laughs> Is it, has it been posted recently? or? Yeah, when you go into um, Paleo News and, and scroll oh. up a little. On. You should find Ooh. it. Uh, it's a preprint, so it didn't went through peer review apparently, but it is interesting enough, I think, to use it for reference. And it makes some very good points, so mm -hmm. I think it's nothing that would be disputed by... Oh! That's an interesting worm. I, yes, I think you, you probably at some point need to add me to the invertebrate followers because I like invertebrate news. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sea lion in my closet. Oh, and yours as well. Fascinating. Mm. Ah. Damn it, tablet, tablet is buggy right now. Eh. Mm -hmm. I have to Did you remember to with with finger. <laughs> oh boy. Exactly. Oh, found it pseudoplanktonic mega raft. Yep. You saved that, right? Saving what? Yes, of course I saved Anzu. <laughs> I just wait, I'm never gonna let you wait, I'm never gonna let you I'm, not, I'm never gonna let you rest. I just after that last time where you 
Yeah, yeah, Brit. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, as uh, a uh, uh, Tula Coleo. Um, however, Gone. it turned Gone month forever. months later. I found out that I actually had saved it, but in the wrong folder. Oh well, then I'm just resurrection useless. Great. Uh, but but it say uh, but it happened before. That's true. Nah, don't get disheartened, Zomba. You're not quite useless. I, I mean, you were the perfect test subject for your people to send to Earth to see whether you could survive here. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't yet. I haven't served yet. We're going to wait and see. Okay, guys, let me know what oh. should uh, we see on this... Uh... <laughs> On this mega raft. Hmm. Uh, or beneath these mega rafts. It must be really lagging for me because you just. Because for me, you just erased the. The previous. That's, that's normal. Mm hmm. Hmm. For these things, I uh, um, lag up to one minute. Um, a delay up to one minute is is totally totally normal for my internet connection. I mean, a delays of five minutes aren't um, also happen. <laughs> Back on YouTube, we also had once a ten minute delay. <gasps> oh yes. Good old YouTube times. Ah, oh, nobody misses them. I mean, I mean. I mean, you you ask for suggestions. We write down our suggestions. You're sat there ten min, ten fifteen minutes late. Oh, here are the suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why it was a necessity back then to be on Discord if you wanted your dis uh, uh, mm. suggestions to. Be drawn. Yes. Look for the bare necessities. The bare necessities. I think that how we will stop sinking right now. Yes, please. Okay. What you don't like my beautiful singing? It's it's way too beautiful. No, I. <laughs> <clears throat> You, you crumble in the light of its angelic superiority. Exactly. I'm just stringing. I'm just stringing big fancy words together. <laughs> Is it just me, or has nat Nature Communications at least one paper um, got a different style? Hmm. Huh. The logo seems to be slightly different, and the heading of the paper is different. Oh, you mean of the crinoid? No, the um um uh the large uh basically the finny worm thing that was posted in. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, maybe news. maybe they did some redesign. Yeah, it look it looks like it's been redesigned, unless it's because it's an invertebrate. But it's in a slightly different subsect. I don't know. Oh ha. Apparently internet died for Zomba. Oh no. No. Zombas. Come back to her. You're too young to go. Uh. <laughs> How long do people typically live for on Zomba's home planet? I don't think I've ever asked. I have no idea. Ah, uh, God damn, my my tablet is. Ah! 
the, the funny, the funny, the funny thing is, I can hear you complaining and scribbling all random, but watching the stream because it's a couple of it's a couple of seconds behind, you're still just struggling to draw and you haven't gone into despair yet. Ah, and here's the scribbling. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> and scribble. <laughs> Despair intensifies. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the maps that were posted in Paleo News, what paper are they from? Uh, different papers. Um, but Pliocer is working in the moment Ooh. on a map of Europe during the time of the Wessex formation mm -hmm. and so we discussed it a little bit yeah it was the um, Brancosaurus monograph is it yeah the, the, the one in color mm -hmm. but it's a slightly mm -hmm. different uh, age apparently yeah yeah Hmm. Actually, it's something that I want to include in the Paleobotany book. Um, uh, maps at maybe 10 or 20 million year uh, intervals showing the mm. sort of different environments and, and climatic, uh, the climate of the time and just what the world looked like because mostly they're down, they're maybe given a at, oh, uh, uh, Jurassic, Cretaceous, Triassic, and they're given it almost almost a uh, hundred year intervals in some cases, mm. hundred million year intervals in some cases. Mm. But yeah, I'm not sure how feasible that's going to actually be since uh, finding reliable maps is. Mm. Yeah somewhat difficult to them that's due to the fact that they're difficult to actually produce anyway accurate with a reasonable degree of accuracy yeah it's 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 extremely difficult and then the paleoclimate is going to be uh highly extrapolated yeah just think about you you have you need to have um data from exactly the same time for yeah a large, very large regions, and uh, mm. bec especially in Europe, where the where there are huge fluctuations throughout the Mesozoic of uh, of sea mm. levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Ooh, so I don't know. I'd like to include something like that, nice. but I don't know. I don't know whether I'll be able to. Also, something that I find very confusing is almost every, almost all paleogeographic maps also have to pl also insist on plotting on the modern continents and what what position they would have been. And it, it just I find it that just really confuses it because it's like, okay, um, so are you saying that's the actual boundary of what the continent used to be like, or is that just where the equivalent of the modern continent would have been? I find it rather confusing. Yeah, when doing, like... that's that's I I I I too. It's it's sometimes very very strange. And again, thank you, Tablet, it... for not functioning properly. Good Tablet, who's a good Tablet? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So, what are you going to put in association with this bra? Don't know yet. Maybe maybe a hmm. small plesiosaur. Well, I. I'm just wondering, are there any other Mesozoic marine organisms which we haven't really done yet? Well, there will be plenty, but are there any that would make an interesting piece? Because mm -hmm. we've done quite a few Ichthyosaurs and Plesiosaurs. But are there any others that could be used? I think group-wise we, we covered all of them at least once. Mm -hmm. Maybe not just marine mammals, but to, no, uh, marine rep. <laughs> but um, sorry, I'm so used to saying marine mammals. 
Yep. Maybe not just marine reptiles, but are there any other interesting Mesozoic uh, or Jurassic, Triassic, megafaunal organisms that could be interesting to include? We've done we've done the uh, Lidicthes before, but wait, that's Cretaceous, isn't it? Let me go. Uh, which one? Lidicthes. Oh no, that's that's Jurassic. Okay. Oh yeah, it's the other um, pachycormid. It's the yeah, other large pachycormid that's Cretaceous. Yeah. Yeah. I've never thought about that. That, that group's quite... Yeah. Not chronologically. Um... I'm just trying to think of the word. <laughs> But yeah, quite, quite widely distributed in time. Hmm. <clears throat> why am I doing this again? I just remembered why I don't like drawing crinoids. <laughs> <laughs> really? Crinoids are a joy to behold. They are beautiful behold, to behold, but not to draw. illustrate. <laughs> but they are beautiful to illustrate. I mean, they're so simple that they're really easy to do. <laughs> yes, Definitely. incredibly easy. Incredibly, incredibly easy. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I still have. I started making model crinoid a couple of years ago, and I still haven't finished that. I, I I did the See, stem. there are reasons for my despite. Yeah. <laughs> I I I did the stem and then sort of gave up because I realized, okay, how on earth am I going to do this without going mad? Yeah, yeah. I I mean, the stem is is okay mm -hmm. in most species. Yeah. Although there are exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> but when you reach the crown. And then the arms, which oh, often midway yeah. um, split again, and <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, I like the crinoids, which um, have the arms, which are just big, long plates, or that aren't um, highly divided. They're quite nice. Yeah, so simple. So hmm. nice. Yes. <clears throat> and I, I did some years ago a crinoid for a museum um, and after I did it I, I it, it had to be pretty detailed and I after I did it I, I swore I would never do it again mm. um, and, and, the, and they didn't even use it <laughs> <laughs> well um, but they paid for it so um Ah, uh, that's fine. Then. They they can use it later if they want. <laughs> mm hmm I know what you could do is uh, have almost like an ammonite nursery. So the pelagic ammonites, all the juvenile ones, may have stuck to, not literally stuck to, but have stayed in small uh, groups around the logs for protection. Because a, a lot of other juvenile marine pelagic organisms do that anyway. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I've I've been I've had that idea for ages to do. Ah, oh. <laughs> no, it'd be, good. Know, it'd be I, good to finally see someone do it. Um, we could also attach um, um hmm. ammonite eggs to the stalks here. <laughs> what? So you mean that? Ammonites wouldn't have been um, ovivivipar. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I personally think that it's likely that there would have been some diversity in their reproductive strategies. Uh, why? Why would they be viviparous? I. I mean, there is evidence. There is a fossil with um oh, of there is. an ammonite with in situ in situ juveniles within the gular pouch or where within the shell, basically. I have the paper. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find the paper. 
and in their their interpretation of it is that it would have it indicates ov ovovivipar parity within amin that is and an interesting they, idea but from yeah. from the and sound they, of it it sounds not very mm -hmm. uh I don't know. I think I probably haven't described it very well, but um, not very evidence heavy. Mm -hmm. I think it. I think it's also based on the fact that uh, modern Nautilus uh, are oviviparous, so modern Nautilus give birth to uh, live young. Yeah, but Although the but Nautilus is of course no. I know yeah, it's it's no next. Yeah, um, coleoids. Uh, debatably, aminoids are closely related to coleoids. Yeah. So. So. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I mean that, that, that think... association could also just speak for well that the babies were. Yeah. Yeah. First just... direct evidence of aminoid oviviparity huh. is the paper. That but, sounds fishy to me. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not fish, they're cephalopods. <laughs> Cephalopods, even. With without soft tissue it I think this is really hard to prove in yeah. I I don't, I don't know. Well I, I've experimented with it. I did the ammonite holding a um, clutch of egg. But um Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, I could see. I could see that there could be some diversity. Yeah, that's present. of course possible. Hmm. Where is it? Invertebrates, ammonite. My ammonite folder in my, my sort of pa my papers collection, my ammonite folder is depressingly small, which I'm really annoyed about. <laughs> Although I'm sure I've got other ammonite papers which aren't actually in there at the moment. But um, yeah, the sort of general the sort of modern current consensus on ammonite reproduction is that they were oviviviparous, but um, yeah, I, I agree. I'm not entirely convinced. And even if that one fossil does actually show oviviparity, well, there are several fossils. Um, I still think that there is the they were so diverse that there is a likelihood for um different reproductive strategies. So clutch uh brood clutch brooding eggs or attaching them to um. Uh, uh, other things or live brooding, yeah, there are lots of different options. Yeah, yeah I mean this uh, this um, this fossil could also just indicate that uh, they were cannibals. <laughs> yeah, cannibals, or they they kept the the eggs just very close, mm -hmm. or yeah. uh, within the mouth cavity, like some fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or they laid the eggs on each other's shells. That's also possible. <laughs> mm, that's actually an interesting idea. Mm. I mean, in large shoals of pelagic species, that could sort of make sense, especially if they um, came from the lineage of ammonite. This is sort of being a bit more speculative, but if they came from a lineage of ammonite, typically came from near shore environments or benthic environments where they would traditionally attack eggs to shell. If a, a lineage of those ammonites evolved to be more pelagic, uh, yeah. uh, the absence of substrates to attach the eggs to might actually mean that they'd attach them to their shells. Oh, again, though that. That's just completely speculative and can't read. Um, I mean, to, to me, it sounds equally as likely as um, <clears throat> Ovi Vivi Perry. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that reminds me. What the word we were thinking of last night reworked. Yes. Ah, yes. so simple. <laughs> so goddamn simple. Uh. Ah, the human <laughs> mind. Isn't it wonderful? Uh. Also, another word which I have been trying to remember for the last couple of days. Camellia. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to remember that word for the last three days. Oh. And then I, I think I would have forgotten by that time that I was looking for a set. Well, uh, I was w walking down the road earlier and then I started to think about it again because I saw a camellia. And I was, oh no, I was trying to remember what that was called the other day and I couldn't and it's really annoying me. <laughs> and for, for probably. 10 minutes walking, that was all I was thinking of, running through all the possible combinations of names it could be, so it's not Clematis, it's not Campanula, it's not this, that, and the other, ah, and then I suddenly, yeah. wait a second, it sounds like Chameleon, Camellia, yes! So I just, <laughs> I literally explained, uh, literally ex exclaimed Camellia in the middle of this street, <laughs> just completely randomly walking down the road next to some shop. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, to, to the amusement of the people I was actually walking with so that's quite fun oh dear I'm too much of a plant nerd <laughs> ah. mm -hmm. oh yeah Clematis is also nice <laughs> yeah yeah it's I, I always say Clematis but I think it is Clemat uh, Clematis oh uh, well we over here pronounce it that way <laughs> Uh, let me think. Uh, let me see the spelling of it. I, I was listening to a, a, a um, podcast the other day where someone was talking uh, with Latin and Greek names, how you generally pronounce them. Yeah, but you, uh, you, you can't completely follow that. I think... I think, it would, I think it would be unwise to completely follow. Yeah, or well, because if if you do follow that, uh, many the, things the would be pronounced rules, differently. You get, um, triceratops. Yes. Or, or it's actually not. It's not even triceratops. It's tri. Triceratops. Or triceratops. Or 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 is it triceratops? Yeah, I can't remember. It, it sounds like... actually one that one I I always struggled to pronounce for years was um Psittacosaurus. Uh, which one? Uh, Psittacosaurus. Oh, Psittacosaurus. Yeah. Because uh, the, the, I didn't because of course it has the silent p at the start, <laughs> and that really confused me. I was going um, I for years I was calling it Psittacosaurus, and then I called it. <laughs> Uh, what was it? Psittacotosaurus, and <laughs> finally found out that it's Psittacosaurus. <laughs> Actually, when when I first sort of heard it pronounced correctly, I thought they said Stegosaurus, but there was this person saying, "Well, any, anyway, we of course we have color preservation in Stegosaurus." And I was like, "What? What coloration in Stegosaurus? What have I missed?" <laughs> and then they started describing it. I was Oh, you mean this thing? Okay, I know about that, yeah. <laughs> but it was just because I, I thought they said Stegosaurus, but they said Psittacosaurus. The way it's oh, actually wow. meant to be said. <laughs> oh, dear. And then another one I still don't know how to properly pronounce are the, um, uh, you know, ones like um, Ostroraptor and Boteoraptor. And <laughs> how do you pronounce them? How do you pronounce the group the oh uh, uh unenlegias yeah unenlegins Unen... yeah uh i can't pronounce it <laughs> yeah hmm i can pronounce duck though i can pronounce duck very well 
That's that's the most important thing. Yes, and I can pr and well, I I don't actually know actually whether I'm pronouncing Ankyornis right because I think it's actually Ankyorn. Well, in but, German um, you speak Ankyornis, yes. Hmm. Um, but well, every every and country he... basically has its own phonetics. Oh wait, they, they for this. did describe ch. Uh... Angionis. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Angionis. Uh, yeah. Because the, the CH doesn't isn't supposed to be pronounced as chi or ki. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, slightly. Is yeah, he. That's why it's also yeah. anchi source. Yeah. At, mm -hmm. at least for people who are um, superior <laughs> in pronunciation. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the only By which, I, which I mean Germans. Are... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not really bothered by pronunciations. The, the only ones that I do tend to try and pronounce a little more are uh, some of the um, Plants. Chinese names like um, Yishan in, instead of Yixan. And um, ye ho instead of uh, j ah. because I think they're based off a modern language as opposed to an ancient. So people do actually speak them and pronounce them a certain. So th those are the couple. Um, although e even then, it's mo mo mostly only like Tiao Yi Shan um, da Daugo. And uh, Yi Shan, Ye Ho, uh, Zhang Long. It, it's just sort of, it's just sort of um, those specific ones. And what, now that I started getting used to it, I just read them like that when I see the combinations of letters. Yeah. So yeah, those are the only ones I really pay much attention to. I I don't even pay attention to these because. Uh... I don't want to bow down to to Chinese <laughs> phonetics. <laughs> mostly. Yeah. I don't know. I mostly do it because I think they sound nice. I think yeah, it sounds sound... nice, but I but I can never remember it. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, if if I couldn't really remember it, I wouldn't bother. I wouldn't bother, but I've just sort of got used to it now. So now I just pronounce it. Yeah. But anyway. Okay, Mega Raft is looking nice. Now let's add some Aish. animals surrounding it. Beep, yeah, I need some more Beep, animals. Yeah, in... <gasps> yeah, man, I... yeah. Hmm. What about a um pelagic ichthyosaur species, perhaps a nurse? I don't mm. know. How old would that be likely? Maybe I, you know, um, I I see mm. what people in the chat will say, and in the meantime, I'm adding just a lot of small ammonites. Yeah. Swimming between the stalks here. Yes, they count as animals, Dino Dan. Crinoids are definitely animals. They're echinoderms. Yeah. They're deuterostomes. They're closer related to us than we are to. Hmm. Actually, there it's it's quite. I was quite surprised to work out that um, uh, to find out that graptolites are actually quite closely related to chordate. Oh yeah, I yeah. mean, they, yeah, they are strange beasts. Yeah, they're uh, hemichordates, so they're basically um, this they're part of the sister group to uh, chordates, <laughs> pelagic stegosaurus. <laughs> Using its plate <laughs> like fins. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, that's a bit like a sunfish. It probably look a bit like a sunfish. Oh, oh, that that. What's the name of the other sunfish? Because of course you've got the norm. You've got the. Ah, uh, yeah, I oh, know what you mean. There's a more the longer big sunfish, the molla molla. 
Yeah, mm. with a, with it, a longer it's smaller, version. longer, and looks yeah. almost like um, looks like a cross between a um sunfish and two. It's really nice looking. Yeah, and they have this um iridescence on their oh, body. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice. Hmm. Let us see. I have it saved somewhere. Stegosaurus is the dinosaur equivalent of Animalocarus. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean because we haven't oh. found all their pe its pieces yet, so so we <laughs> don't really know how it actually looks like? And in a few years, it turns out that all the Stegosaur material we have already is just an organ of something mu much bigger. <laughs> no, it's because its mouth is shaped like a pineapple. Ah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Uh. Okay, it's like a reverse animal cast that uses its tegomizer as a grabbing link. <laughs> <laughs> yep. R uh, Ranziana Levis. Uh, Levis. Ranziana Levis. Is... Did it, did it? Mm. Ah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, have and you have you seen the these photos of uh, treasure sharks, uh, large-eyed treasure sharks outside the water, and how iridescent they are? Oh no! Yeah, it's oh, I have to it's have crazy. It looks like they they their whole body is uh, is like a um. Is covered in, in, in a thin layer of oil. Hmm. Thresh is sharp. I think it's not visible when they are outside the water. Uh, uh, inside the water, but... Um... Yeah. No, um, I, I don't... I, I, I've never thought of them as being iridescent, but apart from just sort of distant usually um the quality images of them jumping out i've never really seen them out of the wall yeah mm. i think i have seen so far only two pictures of this but uh yeah yeah i'll see if i can find they look sort of shut the images i can find of them jumping out the water mostly long distance so they just sort of look the the generic grey shiny but wet yeah hmm hmm oh, oh that reminds me there is this beautiful fish um I'm just trying to see whether I've got it saved because otherwise I can't remember the name but it, it literally looks like a silver sword I think I've posted an image during one of the streams before hmm but it, it, it's 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 incredible. It looks like it's made out of metal. Uh, I'm looking now at as well. Is it this one? Ah, here you see it a little bit. Uh, hmm. See, it's not all species of Ooh. treasure sharks. Oh, here you see it a little bit. Okay, I send it on Facebook. There's a better picture. There was a picture recently which was very, very vibrant. Oh, this one is what I have seen so far. Mm. So. And 
this one as well. Oops. Okay, send on Facebook Messenger. Okay. Oh, Drake also posted two two images, where you mm. see it is a little bit. Oh wow! Yeah. Yes, I can definitely see what you mean. Kind of metallic. Wow. That oh, almost this... doesn't look like a real photograph, <laughs> <laughs> or at least the second one doesn't. The yeah. first one. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Razor unexpecting. Yeah. Uh, that's very nice. Oh, let's add a small plesiosaur here. Hmm. <laughs> and to all those who can't see what we're talking. He, 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 he. <laughs> I shared one of uh, of Drake's pictures. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, I'm just trying to find those long fish that I was talking about, and I can't find out what they're actually called. Um, annoying. I think you mean uh, war fishes. I'll have a look. Hmm. Yeah. There are a couple of pictures, but yeah. I'm not sure exactly. I think these ones are a little too skeletal. The wirefish, which I keep on finding pictures of. Mm. Yeah, I've just posted one into Voice of the. Oh, that's literally uh, <laughs> metal. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I type in wirefish and there, there are no actual fish. Oh, it's no, just uh, this. actual <laughs> wire fish. <laughs> There's some quite nice ones, though. No, not wirefish. Uh, I... Oh. oh, or fish. Oh, it's Yeah, I, I wasn't fish, sure how but... to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh... Or fish. Yeah, it's not an orfish, but they're very nice. Yeah, and they're also it's very metallic, oftentimes. Yeah. I find them very interesting because, of course, uh, in, they're reasonably deep water fish. Yeah. But they actually um, swim vertically. Hmm. Which which is just very odd looking. They, they don't swim horizontal, they swim vertical. Yeah. It's it's Just quite bizarre. Rich. I I have seen a documentary on it. There is a place in the Mediterranean. I, um, yeah, I think I know which documentary it is. I've probably watched it too. Yeah. Is it the one where they sort of talk about it being the inspiration for the sea serpents and also, also, but they uh, in the Mediterranean yeah. there is a place where you can go diving near a. Um, <gasps> oh, I would love to see them near a. Um, a research um how are these things called again oh god in english uh, which which float on the surface but are attached to the oh. sea uh, yeah. mm, i'm not sure ah oh, god boy uh yeah boy platform boy yeah yes mm. and um apparently this this boy um Kind of attracts uh, okay. these fishes, and um, during main maintenance, uh, several times it was noted uh, that they they come up um, the chain 
which uh, connects uh, the boy to to the sea ground, seabed, mm. um, and so they started an ex uh, expedition um, to to film this animal for the first time, really, um, and and get a decent sample size of uh, film. Um, of film from different specimens in their Ooh. in their uh, habitat. Yeah. Beautiful scenes, and um, apparently they, for example, found out that uh, um, these fishes are able to um, detach their tail like uh, lizards. Really? Yes. That's very interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I'd really, I'd really like to see them at some point, but they're just so, they're just so odd looking. They're very weird. Of course, they're completely harmless because they're they feed them plankton, don't they? If I yeah. remember correctly. But um, yeah, that they're, they're just so odd looking. And they have an extremely small brain, apparently. Oh yeah, isn't it that they um, have the smallest brain to body ratio of any fish? Is that one yeah, of the facts yeah, yeah. that's thrown about a bit? Yeah. Hmm. I've never done much research into it, but they're part of a larger family which does include other fish, and it's quite interesting because they have the um, sort of morphology of their bodies is very um, disparate within the group, and yet their coloration is almost identical in all species. <laughs> they they are all this blue coloration with red fin. <clears throat> and I'll mute myself for a moment while I cough. Yeah. So, where are you, weird fish? Weird fish! Show yourself! Yeah, it. But, um, yeah, um, of course the family also includes the, um, Oprah as well. Uh, uh, which is that, the fish which has been shown to be, um, at least partly, um, endothermic. Hmm. And pretiforms. Uh, oh yeah, on that one <laughs> picture that Dragon Sunders posted, you can really see how metallic um, they are. Damn. Mm -hmm. And damn that that moonfish has seen seen some shit. Oh god. <sighs> Oh. B -b 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 speculative mm. evolution ideas some species of stemmed feather stars produce a nectar like substance and they're, uh, sp they're specialized hummingbird fish with long extended thin tube like mouths who mm. feed on the nectar and uh, defends the feather stars from predation. Um, you know, feather stars with stems are just called crinoids, sea lilies. <laughs> they, are, they are the same group. <laughs> or rather, um, sea, uh, uh, feather stars are free swimming crinoids. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, something I find quite interesting that um, in paleo art depicting crinoids, they are usually shown as being just these seasile, unmoving things just being washed around in the current. And yet, modern crinoids are very mobile 
and they can go oh, against yeah. the current and it's very interesting and yet that's not really depicted commonly in paleo art. That's true. They also um, move very active in the current, against the current to better filter out yeah. uh, plankton. Yeah, it's the um, vertical feeding fan, is it? Yeah, yeah vertical so. feeding fan, I think that's what it's called. Hmm. Oh yeah, if we're talking about weird fish and other weird fish, is the, the loose jaw. Loose jaw. I'll post some pictures. Mm -hmm. it, it's the sort of fish that when I first saw it, I thought that uh, when I first saw a picture of it, I thought that can't be real. It looks like it's got a praying mantis claw sticking out of its face. Ah, I think but, I know what you mean. Yep. Most of the images of them are actually illustrations because. I'm not actually sure whether we have photographs of them when they're they're deep they're deep sea fish. Oh, then uh, ah okay then no. and then I haven't seen that one I think. Yeah, and they're just weird looking. What I found most weird was the fact that look they've got that big gaping basically big gaping holes in their head. Which oh, that at one. At the time, it was very yeah. odd looking. He has an illustration by Alex Rice. It's, mm. it's very nice. Shows very nice how how uh, delicate and <laughs> complex the jaw mechanism is. Mm. They're, they're very interesting. Yeah, I like them. When I first found it, they creeped me out, and now I just find them very interesting. Mm -hmm. If anything, they're even weirder with their jaws closed because they're so large and they overlap the gills quite a bit. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, deep sea fish are so interesting. <sighs> I was uh, last year at a special exhibition in Hanover where they had mm -hmm. a deep sea, uh, a deep sea exhibition, and they had also a lot of um, fishes in in jars, and so Ooh. on. So surreal specimens, um, mm -hmm. and it, it, many of them are really small. It's it's quite bizarre. You, you see these photos and think, oh, they are at least Massive. the size of a of a trout or something. <laughs> You yeah, know, but nope, nope. Then, then you get them in a jar, and it's like, it, Where it's is the it? size. Of... Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, it's tiny. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I actually think I was quite surprised when I found out how small a gulperial was, because I always imagined them as being sort of big, maybe one meter, two meter long things, and then mm. they're really about. Uh, how large are they? I think larger ones could be almost a meter, but mostly they're maybe 30 centimeters long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it also really confused me because I've always known them as gulper eels, but I think they're more commonly known as pelican eels. Yes. Or are they slightly different? I still haven't checked that out yet. Oh my god. That looks so weird. <gasps> oh, with the extendable. It looks it's like it's just it, incredible. It it looks more Absolutely like it just incredible. swallowed something. And yeah. Oh my god, I have to share this on stream. Oh, oh, that is. It's just incredible. It looks like it's not part of this organism. Yeah. I mean, of course, because the end of the mouth does actually have, have bone within it. It still yeah, it, has bone within the tip of its. It looks it's, more it's, like it's, it's giving a blowjob, you know. I still haven't. I still haven't actually uh, looked up to know what that means. So I still, whenever no, someone mentions it, nobody needs know. to know what that means. <laughs> That's fine. That was what I presumed. <laughs> Hence why I've never looked. 
but yeah, um, ah, oh, fish mouths are so cool. They're oh, they're just brilliant. Okay, let's add they're some really some fishes really maybe. Fish. Fish. What do you call a fish with no eyes? Tell me. Blind. <laughs> That's too easy. Actually, I like it because there's the four-eyed fish. Well, actually, I think it's called a barrel eye. It's not a four-eyed fish. It's called a barrel. Hmm. There, there is another fish which is called a four-eyed fish, but it's not. It doesn't have four eyes. Its pupil is actually split in half by a. Oh uh, yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really interesting. Very strange little guy. Yeah. Uh, adapted uh, adapted to live at the surface waters in... Is it mangrove swamps? Or yeah, yeah, to, to have one one eye basically the above, eye the above the water line and one below. Half below. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Nathan, you missed only one drawing, but this is the second drawing and will also be the last. Yeah, they're just so weird. Actually, that was something I did as I made a I made up a creature the once. Basically, within the one I had three different pupils, and one pupil was for visible light, one was for ultraviolet, and the other was for infrared. <laughs> I of course, once that's completely created silly, but... um, creatures with <clears throat> with two pupils per eye, and so I imagined that um, you could. Uh, they could have three dimensional vision on um on each eye even if they were facing okay. sideways ways that's an interesting idea would that would that work i have no idea <laughs> there i wouldn't there i couldn't be circular if that was the case i think it would have to be almost like two circle or two spheres half fused together that sort of shape but yeah, that might be possible. Hmm. That's interesting. Now the question is for me more like uh, how far do we have to, to keep two eyes apart so that three-dimensional vision actually works? Ooh. Well, for starters, I have just found a diagram showing the eye of the four-eyed fish, and it's interesting because it looks like it has um basically the eye the light from one pupil goes only to half of the retina, and the light from the other one goes to the other, so it does keep the images separate. Hmm. Oh my, that that is. Looks almost like a trilobite fish. <laughs> oh, these guys, yeah. They they are strange. Weird. I don't even know how they are called. <clears throat> I remember seeing a picture of them, and uh, I think I also saved it for inspiration purposes. Okay, adding some little depidium here in the background, just for sassy. <laughs> Thank you, Drake. Yes, uh, uh, uh really works well as a meme. <laughs> and I'm very, very thankful that you sh uh, that you shared it. Add some <laughs> some eggs this is funny. of ammonites. Yeah, that the um, link the link that I just posted to the four-eyed fish paper. Warning: anyone who's interested, you have to click on another link to get the paper, and then it brings you to PubMed, 
um, then you also need to click on another link to get to the actual paper. Oh. And from then on, uh, or at least I have access. I'm not sure whether it is an open access one or whether it's just because I'm still logged in from the last. So you may be able to access it, mm. and you may not be able to. Hmm. So like an the... Easter egg hunt. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Tristan is still 30 minutes away, so he will probably not appear on the stream. No. How much long? How long are you going to be on the stream for now? I don't know. How this, much longer? This was supposed to be the last sketch. Hmm. I think I'm just, if you're if this is the last sketch, then I'll stay till the end. But um. Other other than that, I'll probably head off pretty soon. Yeah. Oh, I I'll head off at the end of the sketch. Yeah, I don't know. This I is, need to you see. know, this sketch you you could work on endlessly. Mm. <laughs> add yes. more and more details. Add more and more creatures. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but where's the token decapitation? Peter dinosaur head just floating randomly <laughs> next to it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could That's actually really add nice. some um, some diving uh, pterosaurs. Hmm. That could be nice. Some dinosaurs, I think, wouldn't fit really into the paper uh, into into the picture. But 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 without dinosaurs, you can't. Actually, say that it you can't do a hashtag dinosaur art. Oh, uh, we have dinosaur in the first <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm I'm just being silly. A, a dinosaur would do. Well, depending on how you did it, um, but yeah, it's unnecessary. It's way too silly. How dare you? Yes. Ah. <sighs> Okay, let's see if this works with a diving pterosaur. Actually, we've done a Pycnodon stream, haven't we? Yes. Or you have. Um, have you done just a general fish stream? I can't remember whether you have or not. Uh, nope. Okay. <sighs> Dive bombing pterosaur misjudges hits the log instead. Flap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think that's a juvenile, isn't it, Dan? Yeah. H have you seen the 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 juvenile moonfish? I may <laughs> on Discord. Okay. Oh, it's on Discord. Don't need to type it out then. Uh, oh, what did I actually click on? Oh, okay. oh my goodness, it's a dog! It's, it's so cute. Oh, it's adorable! <laughs> oh, it looks like a cartoon. It looks like one of those disproportionate cartoons that are... Oh, that's adorable! Right then. <sighs> Be sensible, Julian. Be sensible, it's just... Just a fish. Oh it's my goodness, it's so adorable. It's, but it's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Yashua, I think you got um, so mad at me just at uh, that moment that you cut out. Because <laughs> <laughs> all, all, all I heard was, but it's just a fish. It's just oh, a fish, was... yes. Yeah. Hmm.
Well, you, you know, it's just a fish. It's not a plant. It's no plant. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not the same. That's that's true. Yeah. We can't compare them. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, that's also a nice one. The juvenile of the large species. Mm. Oh, with his, with oh his it's spots. so pretty. Yeah. Actually, another juvenile fish that I really like is um. Have you ever seen juvenile lionfish? Nope. Okey-doke. Have you ever seen juvenile um, basking sharks? I feel like I have, but I can't remember what they look like. They have very so strange I may hooked not... noses. Oh. oh, wow. They look even more fancy than the adults. Oh, yes. They're, they're almost ghostly. Yeah. What? Oh, wow. I see what you mean about the juvenile basking shark. Yeah. It looks like they've swam too quickly into the side of a boat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah ju juvenile. Uh, Damn, uh, ontogeny, what's... you're wild. Yeah. Oh, another one is. Well. When I collected it, it was called <coughs> Juvenile Flying Fish. I, I think it's either a, um, it might be a moth fish or a flying gurnard, but here's another interesting baby. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Yeah. Oh boy. Spamming you with baby fishes. Ah, uh, so many cute oh. baby fishes. I can't even. Ah yeah, there's a there's a, a basking shark juvenile. Yeah. Yeah. Such a weird animal. You weird. wouldn't think that it's it's the same species. No. I wonder if we found if their skeleton preserved and if we found them in the fossil record, would we realize that they were the same species? Or would they be classified in different genera even? Or would realize that, uh, okay, this one's a juvenile, so it may be hmm. the juvenile of this one. Hmm, I don't know. It would need a Jack Horner to determine that. Mm -hmm. So a swarm of little fishes here, swimming away from the pterosaur. Yeah, I, I would say that that thing, uh, the baby fish that I just shared is a flying gurnard, probably. The one that I wasn't entirely... Hmm. Although, if someone does actually know, uh, please let me know, because I'd very mm -hmm. much like to know. Mm. Well, actually, maybe it's not. Uh, oh, I'll just leave it. It's a baby fish that's cute. That's all that matters. Oh, I presume you've seen the videos of the baby rays. Also, what? 
of the baby raised the uh, skates? Uh, I think so. Yeah. There are many, you'd... many videos of of baby baby skates. I think. Yeah. Um, they are so skatish. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't. I think it might have been a juvenile. I, I, where did I. Sh I think it was on Facebook uh, yesterday or the day before. I shared a video of a um, baby. Be lump suck, and and it and it looks adorable. It's just so cute and round. Drengsa said, "Exact baby moonfish was already posted by Dino Ten just five minutes ago." What else could we add here? We have ammonites. <laughs> yes, I agree, Dino Dan. That's a very cool bat. Fish, even. Oh dear, I was meant to say fish and I said bat and that just ruined it. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, babe, you're fish. And what are those round floaty things? <gasps> Wait a What are those? I I can see what they are, but what type of fish is it? Is that a um puffer fish of some kind? Seem too long to be puffer fish. Hmm. LGGV, that's a very nice uh Quinurus. Oh. Nice nice. Nice and fluffy. Floof. Floof. <clears throat> ah, hatchet fish. Ah, I see. Yeah, looks like it. Oceanic puffer. I've never heard of them before. <sighs> there are too many fish. You can't know them all. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was watching a. It it was a comedy, but um. Uh, a while ago, and one episode really annoyed me. One part of it because um. These two people were, were basically having an argument over the identity of a, and so they uh bring it to this university professor who's who's an entomologist. And this entomologist, uh, and they were asking him, will you be able to identify it? And he says, of course I can identify. I can identify every single insect uh, <sighs> in the world. <laughs> and I'm just sort of sitting... Um, you know uh, how many insects there are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, oh, dear me. I mean, even the experts, experts in just single fields, so just on beetles or a specific group of beetles. Yeah can struggle to identify them. I doubt that you, claiming to be a generic entomologist, can identify every single in insect in the world. That's very <laughs> unlikely. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I found that a bit amusing. Yeah, I, I, I mean, even... There's a reason why they are experts for little con con compar uh, comparatively uh, small clades mm -hmm. because it's the <clears throat> field is just so vast it would be impossible otherwise for yeah. for human mind to handle all that diversity mm-hmm I keep on feeling like I want to say, unless you're Darren Nash. <laughs> unless you are Darren Nash, of course, yes. Yes. Yes, uh, well, that's... That's... Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> we don't need have need to talk about that. That uh, yeah, Darren Darren is a, spe a special kind. He's beyond human in that aspect. Mm -hmm. It's it's quite funny. Um, uh, Dave Martell uh, mentioned him a couple of times and told us a couple of funny stories. I mean, apparently there's even a there's even a whale a uh, whale skull buried. Um, behind the university, <laughs> behind one of the university buildings. It's so more you know, but why is it there? Uh, because Darren H buried it there and forgot to dig it up. <laughs> <laughs> to to get a good uh, specimen out of it, or? <laughs> uh, yes, I think you think it was probably a head at the time, as opposed to a um. Ah, or they probably had no no beetle box large enough for it. No. I can imagine. I mean, I, I'd really like to have th some dirt tools um, at the university, but I don't think that's really going to be... Ah. I don't think I'll be able to trick or... No, not trick, convince them to get <laughs> some dirt. <laughs> Yes, yeah. Daniel Dan knows all the insects, especially the dead ones. Of course. Mm -hmm. oh, this is so confusing. I just want to download it. Ah, I don't want to know how it works. I just want to download it. <laughs> if you can't download it, just upload it. Yeah. Have you tried switching know, it basically... on and off again? <laughs> Uh, not yet. See, but basically, uh, for one for one of my essays, I need to do a um, for my coursework, I need to do a um, drawing of a trilobite in a vector illustrator program. Uh, now, who has my, that idea? <laughs> um, the um, uh, quantitative methods lecturer, so the course leader. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah. And you don't get that program at university? We do, but the way for me to access it isn't working, so I can't ah, actually... Yeah. And I and I refuse to do it on a university laptop because that means I can't use my digital pad because I will need to download the program and I won't be able to do that. So um, I'm trying to get it on my home computer, but it's, it's not working how it should work. So I'm now trying to find a... Uh, um, there are several free versions online which should suffice for just line drawing. Yeah. But uh, I'm trying to find how to download one, and on the front page there's this big button that says download. You click on that reacting. and it brings you to a page about how... Yeah. Uh... And then it just brings you to a page about downloading but doesn't have a button saying download the program. Uh... So, and I don't understand computer... Like, uh, computer speak enough to know what it's going on about. Yeah, maybe you actually already downloaded the the um. I don't know the file to to install it, but it just didn't tell you. Maybe look into downloads if it's yeah. maybe already there. <laughs> hmm. I'm surprised how how uh, oh, silent oh, Sassy is, work. because I did a lot of his uh, favorite things, and and nothing came. Mm. What the heck is that? <gasps> oh, that I recognize the head. I think I know what fish it might be from, but that's incredible. Seeing how it actually works, a night fish or night fish. Ah, Sassy is observing cautiously. Okay. Styliform vacuum. I th think I I recognize this fish, but I'm not sure what its common name is. Let us see.
Oh. <laughs> hmm. Oh, yes, this one. <gasps> oh. That's how it works. That's interesting. Ooh. And at the same time, there's speculative evolution with a giant bird <laughs> on the same page. <laughs> yeah. I'm not surprised. That's interesting. Uh, maybe let's add here a giant uh, Bellum Knight. It's interesting. This image looks to be is quite complex compared to most that you do for the Paleo. That's true. Tiny pterosaur. Actually, something else that I find really I find really interesting about modern fish is the diversity of pupil shapes. Oh yeah. Because when you look at modern fish, it really some of them are very weird. Some pupil shape. Oh dear my. Um, I still can you still hear me? Because yes. something's just happened to my computer. Okay, that's fine. I I, I can still hear you. Yes. Sorry, a big message came up and confused me for a moment. I wasn't sure whether I'd lost everything. A big message. You lost everything! No! Hyperscreen. <laughs> yep, yeah, I think this might install properly. Ah. Good. Very good. Hmm. Would the cuttle bone within Longio sepia be that large in proportion to the wad? I'm, That's something I've never I've I'm, never actually researched um, how large the cuttle bone is in the cuttlefish. Uh how how big is it? Oh, ten centimeters. No, it's not large enough. We're doing here a full-grown uh, uh, megatoitus. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's oh, that's. <gasps> Oh, uh, yeah. do you remember the name of that uh, 18th century artist? I think it was a father and son who created all those beautiful glass models of sea creatures. It, it, the name begins with E, and I can never remember what it is. It's, ah, um, yes, they, they made a lot for the uh, natural history natural museum in history Berlin. Museum. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but I've just found a uh, image of them. Um, it's from Pinterest, so of course it doesn't give much information. Ah, oh, it's, it's an image, an image of a uh, glass cuttlefish dissection, and it looks Ooh. like it might be their work. Ooh, but, yeah.
Okay. Is it working? I'm just having a look. Hmm. Blashk. Is it the Blashk models? Hmm. Could be. Uh, the Leopold uh, Blashk. Mm. I think it might be. I shall have a look. Yes, it is. Ah. Yep. Nice. Oh! I didn't know that... Uh, whale sharks laid eggs. What? Uh, at least it looks like an uh, egg capsule when you scroll up. Oh, I, oh, okay. Actually, thinking about it again, that does make sense, considering what family they're. Yeah. Hmm. At first, at first, it sounded very odd, but seeing that picture, of course, it makes sense because they're related to the dogfish family. They're not hmm. actually in the same family as dogfish, but they're yeah. the sister group or yeah, something like that. But I, I, I so wonder, yeah, that where, are, where do they lay them? Are they just free-floating? I don't know. Oh, there's actually a model. They float. Okay. Ah. Hmm. They all float. All That's floaters. very interesting. I never thought about that. <clears throat> That is very odd. So, folks, if 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 you ever find a floating giant mermaid's puff in the middle of the um, Pacific Ocean, it's probably a whale shark <laughs> or some plastic uh, garbage. Yeah, more likely these days. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Sassy, uh, what what animals could we maybe add to this? I mean, uh, I in my mind, I'm mostly looking at uh, Posidonia shale stuff. So you have some Dapedium here in the background, and mm. Mm. that's a nice bellum night. Mm. Oh, I remember that video of that uh, that bird hunting alongside. Oh yeah, a whale shark. Hmm. Uh, Acidorynchus. Uh, Mason, yeah, I could add ichthyosaurs, but I think that would make it too crowded. Mm. Acidorynchus. Ah, one of these very long boys <sighs> pointy fish mm. it's pointy pointy fish it's so pointy <laughs> oh it's so pointy I wanna die <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how much for the pointy fish? <laughs> I think that's the next thing he said. 
depends on what movie you were quoting. <laughs> I that that was from uh, 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 despicably no yes uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I never. I'm never sure how to pronounce that. No, it, it, it's fine. My sister couldn't even remember what it was called the other, despite the fact that she's watched it five times. times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, this is this is beautiful. I've just found the the most incredible piece of paleo art I've ever seen. Oh wow. Uh, but brace yourself for this. Oh ha! It, it's beautiful. Oh ha! Oh, Yo Yo isn't here to count my oh has. Damn it! <laughs> oh yeah, I have <laughs> seen. I actually look at it right now <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> yes, it's it's perfect. Overwhelming fossil fish of the month, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. Actually, I just thought something else we need to, uh, you need to do at some point is um one of those ammonites that forms a triangle. Oh yeah. I think they are from the and Triassic. Oh no no no! Actually, I, I think, think they were. So. It's not. It's not even an ammonite. It's. I don't think it's actually technically an ammonite. Let me just check my book. Yeah, and I think there were two forms, mm -hmm. which aren't not even closely related. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, a friend of mine is an expert. Hmm. I would need to ask him. Uh. Yeah, it's not. It's an ammonoid, but it's not an. It's um, not an ammonite. Mm. So. Uh, Solly Solly Slimini. I'm butchering the name, but so are well. Mm. Actually, one good thing uh pop culture science names um is that they're generally easier to pronounce. Yes. Dinosaur no no it's not Despacito. <laughs> <laughs> and no adding Velociraptor will not make it better. Because oh, hi, this, is, this is Middle Jurassic. Oh, this baby manta for a moment. It looked so, so confusing. Oh. Greetings, Tristan. Tristan. Hello. Ah. I finally got home minute. after a way too long car ride. Oh god. Traffic today, I swear. Ah, god, yeah. Anyways, I'm sorry that it took so long and I completely missed out on the Anzu part by the looks of it. <laughs> yeah, this, oh, this is fine. the second sketch, uh, which <coughs> will also be the last one. Yeah, understandable. You said that you needed work to do work, so. Yeah. <laughs> understandable. Yeah. This is really cool, though. What is this? This is supposed to be um, the the crinoid thing, I think? Yeah, it's a crinoid mega raft. <laughs> ah, I thought so. I remember hearing you talk about that. Yeah, it, very, very cool environment. Uh, yep. I don't know what to add more. <laughs> Maybe more mm. ammonites? Or 
more fish. I think maybe a couple. Someone of them. just recommended baby ichthyosaurs. Hmm. Now I don't think that would be relatively li so likely, because we know that ichthyosaurs had different environments back then. Hmm. There are actually studies on that. What studies are you talking about? Just out of curiosity. Oh, I can't remember the name. It's been years. Do, do, do. Uh, what else could we... Oh, some, some free floating crinoids, maybe. Mm. Mm -hmm. Simple to add. Also, when you zoom in, you see little egg cap uh, capsules on, on the... On the stems here, which are uh, from the ammonites. Yeah, I've got a program. <laughs> oh yeah, because uh, there was that ammonite study about um, reproduction. I'm forgetting what it was. Uh, wasn't that wasn't the discovery that they produce uh, egg capsules? I thought. Or am I misremembering something? Uh, well, um, Julian has a paper that claims that uh, ammonites would be uh, viviparous. Oviviparous. Or oviviparous. Yeah, it's nearly the same. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? This is the first I'll, time I've ever heard I'll, of that. Yeah, it was for me as well. I'll, uh, I, th I thought that it was sort of one of the generally known things. Um, I haven't found I haven't found any papers um saying anything else, but um yeah there it is I've just posted it again um they found the I think the general gist of it is basically baby ammonite shells in uh mummy ammonite shells. and it seems to indicate that it, it sort of goes along with the idea that ammonites were fast reproducers. As, um, as opposed to nautiloids, which are generally they produce uh, fewer offspring in a single go, but they're um, more well developed. Whereas ammonites produce uh, lots of uh, uh, small, less well developed um, offspring at a time, and their reproductive cycle was quicker. <laughs> This is a really cool fossil. I'm looking over the paper and I'm looking at all the at the pictures and there's like tons of little babies in there. Yes. I, I did not I know that. Save it that too for later. I'm just trying to think. Okay. Wow. Think. I never knew this. I can't remember whether I've actually read the paper fully yet or not. <laughs> I skimmed quite a while ago. Now I have to ask: Are there any o other oval? For us mollusks, because I feel like this, I don't uh, know of Nautilus. any. I'm pretty sure the Nautilus is as well. Nautilus are ovoviparous? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. They are? Wait, what? Now I that was also new to me, but I also never uh, thought about their reproduction, I have to say. Oh no, apparently they lay several eggs at a time. I thought they were oviviparous. I thought they were ovoviparous. Oviviparous. Yeah, because I would have never thought that ammonites were oviviparous, because I'd never have heard of a of a even anything remotely similar to a live bearing mollusk. Like I never imagined like a pregnant slug, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is completely new to me. It's quite strange. And I'm not sure if the evidence they use there is enough to propose actually oviviviparity for ammonites. Where's my big cephalopod book? <laughs> <laughs> big, oh, big book. Hey, that's where my lamprey book was. It was inside the cephalopod book. I've been looking for that for ages. <laughs> you stick your books inside of books? No, so I'm not I the only I one? I don't, I don't. What? I you I just both do this shelf. atrocity? <laughs> Well, I need to like bookmark. I like 
I'll sometimes have a really thin book and a really thick book, and I need to bookmark a page, and I'm just like, eh, whatever, I can't reach my bookmark <laughs> right now. I, I, I have done that before, but no, this time it was no accident. I know, I, I always have so much paper around that I just tear off something and and put it in between the pages. <laughs> I'm getting better. I finally bought some proper bookmarks, and I have them in a little, <laughs> bat, in a little basket next to me, so I just grab one of those in the basket. <laughs> that comes in handy. I'm disappointed because I thought Nautil uh, I thought Nautiloids were ovivipar and they're not. I'm very disappointed. Yeah, they lay eggs. I, I always thought that they laid eggs. Yeah, yeah um, uh, eggs similar in size and shape to a whole garlic, equipped with one to two capsules separated by a narrow space filled with seawater, outer shell white, tough but flexible, and yeah, so on. I'm disappointed, Bummer. but it also makes the ammonites fossil more interesting, possibly. Well, Wikipedia is useless on this. I just looked up re reproduction on um, the ammonite page, and it doesn't mention the study at all, um, which is probably why I never heard of this idea that they're oviparous. Uh, hmm. Apparently, it does mention that apparently ammonites have a crop, which I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Also something I didn't know. Yeah. yeah, apparently they have a crop for food storage. Yes. Which, yeah. that makes me interested because I'm like, what? Do we have any idea on what ammonites are eating? Ooh, uh, depends on which ammonite. <laughs> yeah, it, it probably depends on whatever species you're talking about because okay. there's so many so different types of ammonites. Um... Things but I know that different. I know that at least some of them were filter feeders, and that's mm. been suggested for a lot of like Cretaceous forms. Yeah. In fact, um, yeah. I know that yeah. it's been. Yeah, I know that there was a paper that talked about um, the poten the possibility that um, that uh, big like the the niche of like big baleen whales was sort of taken up by whole schools of ammonites that, that, during yeah, prior yeah. to the Mesozoic. And that's like a really and cool concept for me. So like a whole school of ammonites equals the biomass of one whale, at least in terms of the ecosystem. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of skeptical um, about that because we also have small filter feeders today, often appearing exactly. in pretty large masses. So Yeah, I, I, know, um, I know what you're talking about. And, yeah. and, of, yeah. of course, it, it's not like a it's not like a foolproof idea, and also one of the big problems with like modern fil with like whales. Everyone always asks why don't we have like big whale analogs in the fossil record? But one of the big problems with assuming that there should be is that there hasn't really been the opportunity for that niche to happen until like what the past like literally ten million years probably, um, because cold ocean currents is one yeah. of the main things that allows animals to get really um to live and have a niche like that because it causes big plankton blooms when you have really cold ocean currents we didn't have really cold ocean currents until antarctica got fully isolated about like 25 ish million years ago yeah that's also something i i mentioned recently when we had that uh discussion on the on the server uh yeah, it's, so I it's, think it's uh, often it's, overlooked. Yeah, which is uh, it's also one of the reasons why you don't even see like big baleen feeding whales along the baleen whale lineage, because that was something that just came out recently. Um, we found a, a, a early baleen quote unquote whale that was a macro predator, and that's ma that's many things now. Um, but like we find really big ones in the fossil record that were macro predators. Um, and then there's only the switch to being filter feeders roughly at the same time that you get these cool these cooling oceans. So yeah. there isn't really yeah. any analogs to that life's lifestyle until like 20 million years ago or maybe a little bit earlier. Yeah. It's already surprising how large uh, Aristonectines get, uh, got in their life. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think like the max out size that you get for like decent size filter feeders in the Mesozoic are some of those big filter feeding fishes. Um, oh, yeah. But even oh, those, yeah. yeah, even those don't get anywhere near as big as a whale. Like, I think they max out like 30 feet long. Uh, 
So the, the niche of like big yeah, huge, although yeah. there, there there is maybe stuff that should suggest even even larger species. Are there? I thought uh, that a lot of those like big. Talk about it. Okay, then I won't pester. But I was always uh, always assumed that like the really big, um, what is it? Lidictes specimens Lidictus, were overstated yes. with like how big they are. Or are you like not talking about that? Yeah, I can maybe uh, tell you later. Okay, I, I won't pester. I won't ask anything <laughs> about that. But yeah, it's a it's an interesting topic about a lot of those big filter feeding fish. And and of course, we're not exactly sure what they're eating after all either. All it's just always been assumed that they're filter feeders. Um, and it's, a, it's a most likely explanation. explanation. Yeah, it is the. It's always been heavily suggested, but I I wouldn't be surprised if they aren't just sort of like. Well, the planktonivore type things like when you think of whale sharks a lot of people think that they're like fully planktonivorous but at the same time they'll like take big huge gulps of massive of like massive schools of fish at the same time so they're not entirely planktivorous in that lifestyle mm -hmm. and i wouldn't be surprised if some of these um early um big fishes were the same thing during the mesozoic yeah that's that's a possibility, definitely. Uh -huh. hmm. Ah, there's so, uh -huh. so much potential for these guys, still. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, Pachycormids are generally understudied, I think. Yeah, and they're a pretty long-lived group, too. I, I always, yeah. for the longest time, just assumed they were limited to the Jurassic because like the only one I knew about was Lee Dixie's. Then yeah. I finally started reading up yeah. on the group and I'm like, oh wow, these things go up all the way to the end of the Cretaceous and they yeah. stay pretty big the whole time. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah. Anthony Maltese is currently working on uh, Pachycormid stuff in the background uh, besides his oh, day nice. job and so on. And and he at the last, uh, at the last EAVP meeting he gave a talk about all this research and there is some pretty pretty juicy stuff coming um, okay now i'm very interested yep very very cool stuff uh, okay i think you should now also see the anzu i do see the anzu and it is very cool it is very anzu <laughs> i hope that your little fans sees it I, I hope he, said, he said that he was going to come home from the museum but today because he was visiting and he was going to try to jump on the stream immediately so hopefully he got to see it um <laughs> yes uh, if we can at uh, all write in the little chat it would be appreciated so we know <laughs> yes yeah, is... at first the first idea was to uh to pick it a um, nest building uh, but uh, we haven't really worked with fire a lot on the stream. In case you see it, uh, whatever your name is, <laughs> um, I hope you like it. Uh, I've seen him so many times, I should probably ask what his name is by now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I just nice. realized oh, I never yeah. asked his name. <laughs> and I've seen him like <laughs> one, three, four times now. Uh, uh, but he's always really nice. He's always very excited to see me and talk about the stuff. I told him about some of the stuff we're working on um, at the museum, like on some new Antarctic cynodont material. I think I might have mentioned that in the chat yes. before. Yeah. Yes, which is really neat. But yeah, we'll nice. end up seeing it eventually. Good. When I see him next time, then I will get his name proper. <laughs> yeah, just just three sketches, but m uh, both relatively complex. Uh, Anzu and the Mega Raft, which reminds me, I should probably save this Mega Raft. Oops. It would be very sad if you lost all that progress. Yeah. Mega Raft. Mega Raft is saved. <laughs> no more worries. Although I, I recently had a very large file um, and I thought I saved it, but apparently I closed 
GIMP too early and it was only half saved. So I had a half oh, picture. That sucks. That's so sad. And what? And it was something like a hundred, hundred fifty MB file. <laughs> so a really large piece. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, I am so it, sorry for your it, loss. It it was very painful. Um, well, it was something that I scanned, so I I had hey. still the original stuff. So I just scanned it again and had to assemble everything again. <laughs> It uh, wasn't nice, but happens. Okay, uh, this is everything for tonight. Um, I hope you guys liked it, although it was just a just a so short stream. But uh, see you probably tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.